It's eight o'clock now, so we're eight o'clock. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome to Come to the Table. We're coming to you live from my kitchen table. There is no editing, no do-overs tonight. It's all live. You're gonna see this for real. Um, so bear with us as we navigate new online technology that we have never done before. It's also a new format for us that we have never dealt with before. Um, and so it's all new. Just so that all of you know that while we're talking, um, the rest of you will be muted so that there's not a lot of background noise. But if you have a problem seeing us or hearing us, go to the chat screen, um, which you should find, depending on if you're using a computer or a phone, uh, and just leave a message there for our host. We're the host that you see, but we have background people that are helping everyone else. And so um, if you have a problem, you can write and, write and they will help you. Um, I'm Stephanie Frankie, and I'm head of women's ministries at CCF. And I'm blessed to be able to co-host with my sister, Tabitha Kent. She and her family are missionaries with YWAM uh, in Thailand. They're back in the States temporarily, and so we're blessed that she can be here, here, with all of us and join us at the table. Um, later on, we're also going to have a virtual visit from one of our friends. We have a recipe to share and a prize to give away, and so we're just going to go ahead and get started. As we see your post come in, we're going to do our best to respond to them. If we don't get to them during this time, um, we'll try to answer any questions or comments that you have later, but we have our chat up and so we're able to see everything that everyone is saying. Um, again, for those of you that are coming in a few minutes late, you will be muted while we're talking, um, just so there's not a lot of background noise for us, but please feel free to use that option um, while we're recording uh, so that you can interact with us in that way. I do want to give you up front, there are ways to contact us. Um, there's the Zoom chat while we are recording, but also um, there are three different Facebook pages where announcements have been made about the Come to the Table event. One is CCF's main Facebook page, the Moms Inc. Facebook page, also the Zions Roses Facebook page. If you would like to communicate to us in any way, um, you can comment underneath those announcements or those events, and we will be going to those pages to find those comments and hear your feedback or read your questions or whatever there. Um, but also we have created an email address where you can contact contact us at come to the table at ccflindale.org. Um, the recordings for these shows, because this is live, but we, will all, we are also recording it, there will be links posted um, for you to listen to later on or to share with someone else if you are unable to join us live. Um, I want to take just a few minutes to send out a thank you to a couple of our people that are helping in the background. One is my son, Aiden. Um, he is helping us with a lot of the background stuff. Hi, Aiden. <laughs> Aiden's been awesome. awesome, and he, he has keeping us on our toes and keeping us entertained at the same time. So. Um, he's helping us with some of the tech stuff, but also you guys, Monty Geyer, I think that you all know her. Um, she has helped us so much get acquainted with the new technology and doing so much behind the scenes stuff to get us set up for this. Um, she's gonna help with our chat part. She's also the main host for this event. And um, I think she might be in the dark. I don't know if you guys can see her. But, um, but thank you, Monty. Monty, awesome. so much <laughs> for helping us with that. Um, we're going to get you started tonight just with a laugh, but also to help you um, get to know us a little bit better. <laughs> um, to know um, Tabitha and I just have a really great relationship and um, we've been through a lot of things together. 
But this next story is just going to give you a little bit more of a glimpse into that. And Tabitha's going to share that for us. Just how connected we are, maybe even more. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this actually happened a few months ago when Steph and her family were visiting us in Thailand. And um, we went to, we were looking at these markets for souvenirs and stuff. And we got to one shop that had um, these like wooden foot massage things where you roll your feet over it and uh, we were we took our shoes off so we could see how they felt and everything and the kids are looking around at different things and then we were finished there so we put our shoes back on and we we're getting ready to go and they the our families started laughing at us we're like what what's I don't what's so funny and they're like look down at your feet and I think Monty has a picture. She might be able to put a link on the chat there to see the picture that we took when this happened. But we looked down on our feet and we're both wearing one of the other person's shoes. We had different shoes on. After we tried out those little gadgets, we put... I do have to interrupt. Just okay, for a sure. <laughs> they have the exact same shoe. But just different colors. Except for different colors. Yeah. So one of us was wearing, walked into the store <laughs> wearing one color of sandal. The other one was wearing the other color of the exact same sandal. Um, so we just ended up with getting our shoes mixed up. <laughs> and so they, they, we just were made fun of forever because we were wearing the other person's shoe and didn't realize it. And we look, we're like, why? What's so funny? We looked at our feet and we're wearing two different color shoes on our feet. So um, I think there's pictures up there, a uh, link of when we discovered that we were laughing so hard at ourselves because we didn't even notice it. But what happened today that reminded us of that is that we, <laughs> I came over so we could work on some of this stuff and um, put, took my shoes off by the back door and Steph walked by and she was like, did you wear two different color <laughs> shoes today? And I'm thinking, did I wear two different color <laughs> shoes today? I mean, ever since that happened, our family's been like making fun of us for not noticing that. I thought, surely I couldn't have worn two different color <laughs> shoes today because it was the same sandals, right? But there was one black and one brown sitting there <laughs> where I took my shoes off. And we're racking our brains trying to figure out how it could have happened. And then Steph realized we were being played a joke on by our <laughs> lovely family. Thanks, Aiden and Brett. <laughs> And uh, we found the, the missing shoes in the, in the other room. We were trying to make us feel like we were crazy. But, um, you were crazy because you would have Like I was crazy because I would have worn two different color shoes over here. But I didn't. Everything is fine. But we have a lot of fun. Um, oh, Aiden. He's posting. It was him. <laughs> Thanks for fessing up, Aiden. <laughs> you did have me thinking I was crazy for a second. But. Anyway, it's just really great to be here, to be with all of you ladies. It's so wonderful to see your, your faces coming up there. And um, uh, I haven't gotten to see everybody yet because I was only at church a couple times before we weren't going. But this is a wonderful way to connect and um, just really loving being a part of this and really thankful, thankful to be here with my sister and to be able to share some things with you guys. So um, yeah, so we'll get going. First, I want to, oh, well, the next, I guess it's not first. We have done a few other things already, but I wanted to share just my heart as um, Women's Ministries, why I decided to do this Come to the Table event. Um, the week after spring break, uh, we had a leadership meeting at the church, and Pastor Hickey announced then that the church was going to go online. And... Um, at the time, I was still trying to wrap my head around the fact that you could not get toilet paper at Walmart and the meat was all gone. It was just, my mind was blown about what was happening out there and um, just began to pray that following week about how could I develop something or create something that would still encourage community and fellowship and discipleship among the different women's ministries of CCF. And so um, that following Friday, I have a group of women that I meet with regularly on Friday mornings. And there's four of us, five of us now that my sister is here temporarily. And I have been privileged for the last few years to sit around a table with them on Friday mornings. 
um, to chat, to pray with them, and to share life together. And it's been a life source for me, and there's such freedom to be myself. And so whether we're laughing or we're crying or praying together, um, we experience connection with each other and also with God. And um, as I left our time together, I just pictured us sitting at that table and sharing life together at different experiences, having different discussions. And sometimes it's really funny. Sometimes it's really, you know, deep questions that we have um, in our hearts and just wanting to, this is how my way that I could connect with you was inviting you to come to sit at the table with us and to discuss some of these things. And um, I wanted to, especially at this time, invite you in, let you come and experience that connection and the fun that just envision this big table um, that has a place set for you where we each have our favorite mug filled with our favorite drink um, and we're all sharing uh, in community together. Um, as I was sharing with my sister what I felt like God was putting on my heart for this time and pondering possible titles, I said the words, come to the table. And come to the table is my invitation to invite all of you to come to the table to connect in this community. And it's my desire that as you leave this time, you will feel well-fed, nourished, and refreshed. And as I said those words, Tab says, oh, God has been speaking to me about his invitation to come to the table of the Lord, that she had been feeling an invitation from him to sit with him and discover what that looks like and what that might mean. And so we decided the name should be come to the table to reflect not only my invitation to you, our invitation to you, uh, but it's also an invitation to all of us to come to the table of the Lord. So um, I want to read um, part of our heart for this time is expressed um, in Psalm 23. And for most of us, it's probably a very familiar song. Um, but I just feel like that my heart of what God wants to do during this time is portrayed through the song with him being our shepherd. Um, I'm reading tonight from the Amplified Version. The Lord is my shepherd, to feed, to guide, and to shield me. I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul, my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort and console me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. I want to take just a minute to go to verse five because this is really where we felt like in the midst of, um, you know, that he is our shepherd and we're trying to find times of refreshment in the green pastures and the still and quiet waters and the times where he's refreshing and restoring us. Um, it says in verse five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So before we move into the next section, I just wanted us just to take a minute, each of us to um, spend a moment picturing what those enemies might be that you're facing today. Um, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Those are not our enemies. So it's not our husband or our kids or even the government who's you know, set up these guidelines. Um, but maybe for you, it's stress or fear um, or anxiety. Um, I don't know what it might be and what you're facing right now, but just taking um, a second to think about what that is and then just imagining that here is Jesus, our shepherd, um, preparing a table before us in the very presence, in the midst of those 
enemies, God has prepared a table for you right here, and he's inviting you to come and take a seat at the table. Um, Tabitha is just going to share for a few minutes about what it has meant to her, what God has spoke to her about coming to the table of the Lord. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I just kind of going off of what she was just saying about thinking about where your enemies are, um, I just, I want to take just another minute, just even just to be quiet you know, for, for us, um, because as the Lord was, you know, has been speaking to me about this little by little over the past couple of years, the, the very, you know, I'm asking, what does this mean? What does this look like? And, um, God, I don't know how to do this, you know, what you're calling me into. And he just said, well, first just start by sitting at the table. And so I just want us to take just like 20 seconds or so of just imagining what that might look like. In my mind, I see like a huge field and there's a battle going on around me, but I sit down and there's this feast and, and I feel peace. And so I, I will talk a little bit more about that, but I just want each of you, it could look different for everybody, but just to take a second and just picture yourself sitting down, receiving the invitation from the Lord, and he shows us our seat, and our name is there, and he's prepared it for us, like he knows that we're coming, he's excited, and he's welcoming us, and just shut your eyes if you need to, or whatever, and just sit, and just let yourself be in that space, and look around in your mind's eye, and your heart, and take a breath, And we're just going to ask for the Lord to, to show us what he wants us to hear from him during this time. God, I thank you for your invitation. Mm -hmm. We thank you that you've welcomed us and we long together as um, sisters in Christ uh, across this city, this area, Lord, to, to sit at your table, together to sit at your table. So um, just keep listening to the Lord for whatever he might say. Um, as, as I just share what he's shown me, um, I, I think it'd be awesome. Even as, you're, as we're going through this, if you want to um, put some comments in there about what you may be seeing in your mind or what the Lord is showing you, I think it'd be awesome to share those encouragements with everybody else in the chat. So, um, so yeah, as I pictured myself sitting there and the Lord was like, I want you to come there. It's time for healing. It's time for wholeness. Come sit at my table. And I just, I felt actually a lot of challenge and anxiety of God. I don't know how to do that. Like I'm, I'm kind of used to brokenness and I don't know what that looks like. And I don't know, you know, how to really even sit and have peace. And so I said, if this is what you want me to do, you don't have to show me how to do it. And so he started to kind of unravel this idea um, based on the uh, Psalm 23, five and sitting down was, was the first thing. But the next thing he said is, is just the challenge on my heart to, to cultivate an eagerness for the word of God. Because when we sit at the table, his bread is his word and he feeds us from the bread at the table. And it's a beautiful banquet. And the way that we, um, the way that we are nourished or that we begin to be nourished at the table of the Lord is through his word. And so I really had to um, ask God to help me. And I still am. This is a current thing for me of asking him to develop more of an eagerness. Like we get hungry for bread. Like I have four snacks here sitting next to me because she does. <laughs> too because I might want something to eat you know like this cookies might not be enough or something um but I want to feel that for the word of God and I don't and sometimes it's either boring or I feel like I can't get something out of it or whatever and, and, and God's just like this is the life this is the bread that you need this is what will nourish you and so the Lord began to challenge me just like you know listening to the um to an audio bible or whatever it is to feed a little bit and get that manna that he has for us every day. And so, um, so that's kind of the first thing the Lord was saying, come and sit and then take time to listen and eat the bread of the Lord, which is his word. And so, um, just want to encourage you with that. 
Um, the next thing, I'm, I'm gonna look here, we've got a couple of comments, it's really awesome. Um, yeah, that's awesome, thank you, Luann. Just saying how we see our enemies, and we don't want to, we wanna make it go away, but, um, but we're, we, the challenge from Jesus is keeping our gaze and our focus on him. And that's true, it's really, really true. And uh, getting into the word helps us to do that. Um, so the next thing the Lord showed me um, is that thankfulness that, um, you know, we look, we, I, in our family, we use the term called noticing eyes, having noticing eyes, being able to notice what's around us. And we use that to help see things that we're thankful for. And I'm trying to develop noticing eyes in my kids. But as I see myself at the table, like God prepared this for me, you know, it's not my table that has bills and dirty dishes on it or whatever, like this is the table of the Lord and he prepared it for me and it's got flowers on it because he knows that's what I love. Mm -hmm. And he made my favorite tea in my favorite mug or whatever, like there's so much to be thankful for. And sometimes we just don't take the time to notice it. And so, um, I, I think I shared this before in one of the other videos, but turmoil can't exist where thankfulness grows. And so it's just the, a practice of um, noticing and of cultivating a, a grateful heart and remembering as we look around at the table, like remembering who he is. Remember that we're there because he gave his life for us. Remember that, um, that he he's good even when the things around us in the presence of our enemies right doesn't look good but we're in his presence and there's nothing there's no better place to be you know and it, it amazes me even over the last few days as we as we've been discussing this that every time i picture in my mind sitting at that table all i can feel is peace and i can tell you that's not what i feel in the natural or in any other area of my life right now really is but when I picture that, it's just peace and it just keeps like, tab, this is where you need, this is what you need to walk out of, like walk out of that place of sitting there, you know, like that in my spirit, I'm sitting with the Lord in that peace and that that's what he longs for me. That's what he promised me, you know, and, and we often lay that aside or we forget or our eyes don't notice anymore. Um, but just the challenge to do that, to have. Um, I think, I think that right now, um, in the midst of what is happening outside, it's just a time that none of us have lived through or experienced before. And there is a lot of chaos outside, which then makes us feel like that. And I think that and we've talked, we talked last week about the challenge to finding the things, having those noticing eyes during this time to choose to find things that we are blessed with and that we are thankful for. And um, yeah, I just want to encourage you guys continue to keep using that chat space and write out a word or a phrase or a simple sentence in prayer, just the things that you are thankful for what God has provided for you today. Yeah. One thing, um, I have a friend, Linda, that uh, is in Dallas and um, we were talking about this the other day and she said, Hey, let's for the month of April, um, let's write back and forth just, a, um, a little note of thankfulness just to tell each other what we're thankful for, just as a kind of accountability, um, with each other. So we've been doing that, um, since, well, for the last five days, we started before April started, but, um, every night we, we just write, you know, the number of the days, so day five, this is what we're thankful for. And that's something that we can all do if you pick a, a friend or two or create a chat group or something with um, a few of your friends and just make it about thankfulness because it really does prepare the way for the move of God in our lives and through our lives. And um, it, it encourages me to look for the positive. <laughs> um, so that's been really cool. So the last thing, um, that the Lord was, has been speaking to me about sitting at his table um, is the word contend. And there's a lot wrapped up in that word. I think we could probably do a whole, <laughs> whole episode, episode on that. Um, but one of the things is being, sorry, it's an emotional one too, but, um, but I need to start in my own heart. 
and fighting for my identity. Um, Steph said this a couple of times in the last couple of days, like we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. This is not a fight against, um, like she was saying, our enemies of, you know, our family or school or whatever it is. This is our lives that, you know, we wrestle against um, the darkness around us. And sometimes for me, I get overwhelmed by that or I forget who I am and that I don't have to sit there and just take it. And the Lord is saying to me, it's time to fight. Um, and it's time to, to remember who you are. It's time to remember who I am. And um, I, it, it reminded me of uh, the old movie, The Lion King and Simba, you know, he got scared. He was told a lie. He was made to think that he was something that he wasn't. And so he ran away and lived a different life, tried to forget it, tried to bury the feelings and all of that. Um, and then one day he woke up and he realized all that had been, you know, that he'd missed or that he'd let go and lost because he wasn't coming into his identity. And so I know that's just a movie, but it was a reminder to me, you know, that um, one of our enemies right now is identity theft in the sense that the enemy tells us we're, we're not who we are or tells us that we're something else. And he, he, you know, tells us lies that makes us forget sometimes that we are children of a king and um, that he has a place for us, that we're welcome there, that there's forgiveness there, that there's peace there. And we forget who we are or we forget who he is. And he tries to take that away from us too. And, um, we forget that God is good or we forget that he's our provider. And so, um, yeah, just kind of encouraging that fight in me to say, no, I'm not going to stand for the lies and I'm going to stand up for healing and wholeness because that's what God is asking me to do. And, and not in a way that's in denial or that minimizes the, the tr struggles that we go through or to say that if we just, you know, think positive and everything goes away, but it's remembering who we are in the middle of it and being able to walk closely with Lord, the Lord in the process of it. And um, um, the other part about that um, contending is that we can't give space to sin. Like there is no space for sin at the table of the Lord. And so something in our lives needs to be... Um, be fighting against that the sin that's that might rise up um especially right now where there's so much uncertainty like the yucky stuff can come out you know and so it's it's uh again that that's continuous surrender to the holy spirit to refine us and work in our hearts because there isn't room for that at the table um we're welcome and the lord wants us to come and he wants to work healing and forgiveness in our hearts and we have to be willing to let go of the sin that easily entangles us so that we can be free, you know? And so um, we want to contend for our identity, contend for joy. And that's another thing is in the middle of what could be really unpeaceful or chaotic or frustrating. I tell you, joy does not come easy. Definitely something you contend for. <laughs> yes. So contend for it, you know, contend for it. And um, the other thing is contending for contentment, that the Lord is calling us to contentment. And um, that's a hard one. Maybe we'll do a whole episode about that too. Because <laughs> it's hard. Um, and fighting for forgiveness. Um, that's one of the things as I picture, you know, sitting at the table of the Lord, God was challenging me saying, who's sitting there with you? Who's around the table with you? Mm -hmm. And I had to realize that he's invited other people there that I'm not super happy about sitting next to. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> and knowing that, um, it, it just, it was humbling. It was just, it's such an equalizer, right? That we're all there. I think Sandy said it the other day, everybody's equal at the foot of the cross, you know, and at the same at the table of the Lord, we're all there. And if we allow unforgiveness or bitterness or whatever between us as the people of God, as the children of God, like there, there isn't peace there. There's not unity. There can't be re revival in that place. And so 
um, fighting for forgiveness is really important. Um, yeah, Anna Davis put, we have to be intentional about all of this. And I think that's our whole encouragement to all of you tonight is that, that is we recognizing that and part of why when she started sharing with me about coming to the table of the Lord, I said, yes, I feel like this is what our first event show episode, <laughs> I don't know what to call this, but what it should be about is just an invitation to come to the table of the Lord together. And it is something that we have to do very intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, I think right now, um, if you watch the news or are on social media a lot, it would be very easily, easy. very easy to be just swept away with all of the, the comments and the emotion and the fear that is brought up in all of that. And so, um, the invitation is there. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's, you know, kind of where I'm ending is that we all have different stories and some of them right now are really difficult or have been really difficult or might become that way. And regardless of that, and above all of that is this really beautiful invitation to be, to sit with Jesus and that he sees us, that nothing that's happening is outside of his sight. And, um, you know, maybe he wants us to sit beside him and, and he's just going to hold us for a while because that's what we need. And mm -hmm. maybe he's serving us something that's mm -hmm. really nourishing from his word because that's what we need. And, but he's there, no matter what our stories are right now, the invitation is there and is saying, come, come, I prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So, yeah, I love what, um, Miss Sue just wrote, hi, Miss Sue. Um, the table that I'm sitting at, she says, has a beautiful name tag for each of us. Jesus has called each of us by our own name or our nickname. We belong to him. And I love that. I love that. Yeah. We actually talked about that, having a table set with each of our names, you know, are set in that, in mm -hmm. that place and that, um, yeah, he's invited each of us very personally. Yeah. Um, my original idea for this was to include my Friday morning ladies and my picture had us all sitting at the table together and it, that it would be like our Friday mornings and inviting all of you to join in that where we would be discussing and whatever and then inviting you guys to take part in those Friday morning things and um, as we began to plan it I couldn't figure out how to get them at the table <laughs> <laughs> um, and to do that logistically and remain six feet apart and us be together. Like it just wasn't <laughs> working. And I just, so I was just praying like, God help me figure out the strategy. So for now, these ladies are not sitting physically with Tabitha and I, um, but they are, have joined us virtually <laughs> on my virtual table. Um, and throughout these events, I'm going to be asking them to chime in, in different parts of our show. Um, but tonight I want to introduce you to my dear friend Christy Cox and I'm going to invite her um, to join the show. Hi Christy. Um, I've known Christy for a very long time but it hasn't been really until the last few years that we've become really good friends but we were both um, on staff at YWIM together many years ago and um, she's one of my Friday morning ladies and we, I have tea, she drinks coffee <laughs> and we, um, enjoy we're that. Still friends. Friends. We're still friends. <laughs> um, but I've invited her to, um, be part of the virtual table tonight and I'm going to ask her a question. Um, about this, Christy, in light of Psalm 23 that we read earlier, what does it look for you, like for you to come to the table of the Lord? Well, when he first invites me, you know, I think of someone who's pointing at you, but you don't know who he's asking. Mm -hmm. So you're looking behind you, saying, who, me? Me? <laughs> and he says, yes, you. That's awesome. Um, so just realizing how valuable and precious I am to him, even though there's so many lies that we believe throughout life that make us think that we may not be as special to God as someone else. 
Um, but as I was reading through the psalm, what really stuck out to me and what God's really been speaking to me is um, him being the center, like him being my focus in everything that I do, because it's so easy to get sidetracked with everything that's going on. So the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me. He's always with me. He prepares a table for me. Mm. Um, when our focus is on God, it doesn't even matter the enemies that are surrounding us because they just kind of fade out. That doesn't become our focus and we don't get concerned with that because we know that God has us. And these other things may be kind of a bother um, and they may poke at us sometimes, um, but he's always there to bring all those things, mm -hmm. brings peace. He guides us. He corrects us. Um, yeah. And we get to dwell with him forever. We get to be with him. Yeah. It's just amazing to me how much. God loves us, that he draws us to himself, and we're each precious. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. The whole thing that you were saying, Tabitha, about contending, and what what is God saying in this time? Like, having us as believers step back and ask God, what new thing are you doing? Mm -hmm. What new thing are you doing in my life? Mm -hmm in my family's life anyway yeah, yeah taking sure. those steps yeah. hearing him getting in his word hearing him and walking in obedience to whatever he asks yeah yeah that's a big one yeah and yeah. I, I like what you were saying about um you know knowing that he when our focus is on him the, the enemies or whatever they are they're just smaller right and um yeah it was reminding me of something I had written earlier, like he wouldn't prepare a table for us there if he was worried about it, you know, <laughs> like yeah. he must yeah. know that he's already won, right? He must be yes. stronger and he mm -hmm. must not be afraid. And so that kind of like shifted my perspective a little bit too, like, okay, wait a minute, he's doing this here. So there, he, he must not be too overwhelmed by that, you know, and it, it's not but like, so it's not that we have all the strength to handle that stuff, but when we're in the shadow of his wings and we're in his presence, like that's where we're safe. And so it's just cool to realize yeah. like how strong he is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I love too how you were talking about like that when he invites us to come and he says our name or we see our name at the table, that there is sometimes, this, I think especially for women, just that feeling of, um, that we're not worthy or not good enough, you know, to, but, um, like Sue was saying, you know, that it's not just our name, but maybe even our nickname, like something that's unique and individual to us that he's calling us to come, you know, that we are good enough and we are worthy and he's already showed us that yeah. of what he's done for us. So thank you so much for joining us tonight at my table. <laughs> But it looks Thanks like for you're having far, me. Christy. <laughs> I am. This is my only quiet place. Do you even have something to drink? Do you have tea or anything? No, I have a little water. <laughs> okay, next week. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. We will. We'll see you soon. Yes. Thanks. Right. Thank you so much. We're we're just waiting for the screen change. <laughs> Just making sure. Can everyone still hear us? Okay. This next part is the most important. Are we talking <laughs> about cookies now? My sister is going to share a recipe with you um, that she is calling. These are quarantine cookies. <laughs> for all of you. And good enough, healthy enough to eat for breakfast. Yes. And easy enough for those of you that have young children to make with your children. Yes. So, yes. Um, before 
quarantine was the thing to do. <laughs> we actually call these breakfast cookies because um, I always make them for breakfast because they're really just oatmeal, but in a cookie form, like whatever you might normally do with oatmeal, but we make it into a cookie, which is, um, <laughs> I wish you could too, Anna. <laughs> um, because they're, they're great and they're so super healthy. I'm gonna take them. Um, but now they're quarantine cookies because the other thing I thought of is that we want to be able to create something that's got ingredients that are easy to find, easy to use. And for those of you who might have kids at home, um, that, you know, you need to find something for them to do like I did with mine recently. This is super easy. You just throw it all in a bowl and let your kids, they don't have to be uniform or anything. You just let them do whatever they want. And it's great. So um, Mani has posted the recipe there and I'll just go through it quick and it will also be available um, later on the other mediums that she talked about before but um, I'll say it at the end. Okay just you go through this. So you're going to use about two large bananas but I measured it because I like to be more precise sometimes not often but sometimes. So it's about a one and a quarter cup mashed up real good and I had my kids do that they think it's super fun for some reason. And then you use a cup of oats and um, you can use quick oats if you want it to be a little less hearty um, or you can use regular oats if that's all you've got. Um, a quarter cup of peanut butter if you want. Really you can, this is super versatile, you can't really mess it up so you kind of can do whatever. Um, and these I made, I did a quarter cup peanut butter, a quarter cup of raisins, a quarter cup of dried blueberries, and a um, quarter cup of sliced almonds, and the same amount of chocolate chips just so that we can call them a cookie and you know make the kids think it's an actual cookie <laughs> instead of just oatmeal. Um, and then I just put a pinch of salt in there and that's it. So you can, you can take some of the dried fruit out, you can add more nuts, some people like walnuts in it, you could use almond butter instead of peanut butter. Um, it's very versatile, very easy. Uh, I think there's a picture somewhere, I think Monty might have there. Put that there. You literally just throw it in a bowl after you mash up the bananas and stir it around and then scoop it out. Um, this recipe makes about 15, um, depending on how big you make them. But you can even make these like the night before if you want. And then the next day, just put it in the oven for a minute to heat it up. They're nice kind of toasted-ish or whatever. But my kids love these for breakfast. And then they feel like they're getting a treat, even though it's pretty healthy. You don't have to add any other sugar besides the fruit that's in it. Um, yeah, Anna says she's got those things. So good. I'm. <laughs> let us hear about that. Let's hear how it goes. They are just basically bananas and oatmeal, and so it's it's not like having you know chocolate chip cookie dough or something. But I like them, and they're my kids love them, and they're really great to. Uh, um, yeah to have during this time. If you would like a copy of the recipe emailed to you, you can leave your email address in the Zoom chat box right now while we're recording, or you can send an email to come to the table at ccflindale.org and we will email it to you from there. Um, the next thing that I want to do is um, each week, you could take your turn for dinner. Um, each week, I'm hoping to be able to do some kind of giveaway. And what I decided to do this time is to give away a book. So the book giveaway this time, I need you to listen so that you understand what I'm saying. It tends to get a little bit complicated with the technology and not being able to talk to you in person or whatever. But if you are someone who's listening and you are homeschooling your children for the first time since the announcement at spring break, I want you to write in the Zoom chat or send an email or on one of those um, Facebook pages. So the main CCF Moms Inc. or Zion's Roses under those announcements. How I want you to comment is to leave an emoji first. So whether it's a raising of the hands or a prayer or to crying, <laughs> that would be valid. To leave some kind of emoji. Then I want you to tell me your name, how many children that you have, and what their ages are. So I have homeschooled my kids 
I now have a senior in high school and a junior in high school and I've homeschooled them the whole way. So I've been doing it for a while. I guess that would be 13 years. Um, Tabitha's also homeschooled on and off. I'm still twitching. Mostly off. <laughs> I've had to at times. I've done up to four kids at once. Um, it's hard. It's really, really, really hard, even though I love it and I believe in it 100 million percent. It's really, really hard. Anyway, one thing that I've done and has one thing I've done every school day is that we have had tea. We sit down for a snack and have tea and have had story time. So from the time that my first was in kindergarten until now, my son is a senior, my daughter is a junior. We still have tea time and we still do something that we read out loud together for school. And so of all the women who respond for um, that you're homeschooling for the first time, we're going to put those names in a jar and I'm going to draw a name. We'll announce it next week, but what I will do is hand pick a read aloud book for you to read with your kids, something that my kids and I really enjoyed, but it'll be hand picked for your family based on the ages of your children. Um, yeah, I want it to be appropriate story for and length for what your kids' ages are. And so you leave a message. Me. Yeah, we'll draw a name and then I'll announce it to you and then we'll work out how to get that through you to you. Um, whether I send it in the mail or drive by and throw it out the window, that was Tab's suggestion. <laughs> Social distancing, you know. <laughs> Maybe um, with a newspaper. <laughs> throw out the window. We won't do that. Anyway, leave us an emoji, your name, the ages of your children, and how many of them there are. Um, and we'll draw a name and choose a winner, and I'll hand pick a book um, specifically for you. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Sorry, we're distracted by some of the comments coming in. Um, I think that is all that we have planned for tonight. I want to pray um, before we stop. Can we pray? Yes, and then I'll give our closing. Okay. God, thank you for all of these dear women that have joined us at the table tonight in God, whether they're sitting in their car or hiding in the laundry room or sitting at a table with coffee, God, whatever their stories may be right now, I thank you that you have invited all of us to sit with you and be um, near to you, that you know our names, that you're saying our names, that you're calling us in, you're calling us to be closer to you and that you long to work in our hearts and bring freedom in our lives. And um, Lord, I just pray that you would remind us this week about cultivating thankfulness in our hearts. Lord, that you would give us noticing eyes to be able to see the blessings around us, even in the midst of things that might be seem like they're not blessings. Um, help us to notice and to see where you are and what you're doing. And um, Lord, I pray that you would also teach us to contend for truth, mm -hmm. contend for our identities in you, to contend for forgiveness. Lord, I pray that we would um, walk in those things this week and that you would also churn in us, Lord, work in us um, eagerness for your word, for the bread at the table, God, that we would long for you that we would listen that we would get more out of your out of your word and what you say god that we would have ears to hear what you're saying and mm -hmm. lord i pray that we would continue to share those things with each other that um the ladies that are listening would join with other people whoever they can lord to to remind each other about um thank being thankful for things or sharing scriptures with with each other or whatever it is lord i pray that this would be an opportunity that we take advantage of to create a community that is after your heart. Mm -hmm. And I just pray for a blessing on each woman listening um, tonight and any, anyone that listens later on that you would just um, draw us in, help us to see you and hear you mm -hmm. in a new way in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Um, uh, if you would like to give us any feedback or if you have any questions for us, you can contact us through come to the table at ccflindill.org. You can also continue to leave comments, I think just for a couple more minutes here in the Zoom chat, 
or you can go to the main CCF Lindale uh, CCF page, the Moms Inc. page, or Zion's Roses and make a comment on one of those Facebook pages. Uh, we can get them there. Um, yeah, I think I've said all of them. But next week, we're going to be talking about ideas and how to prepare our hearts and our homes for Resurrection Sunday. And we also plan to continue having guest interviews. So I hope that you will join us back here next Thursday at 8 p.m. Um, also, I want to say, Monty is going to be setting up um, a reminder text. And if you would like to get a text reminder next Thursday at 7.50, so I'll remind you that it's coming, give you a few minutes to get set up, to come to come to the table. Um, you can send a text to 81010 and then put at C, like Charlie, the number two, and then the word table. So at C to table. And Amani has that all in the chat, if you can see that. She's got that stuff That's right there in there, for you too. so she can send you a reminder. All right. And uh, we want to say thanks again to Amani for all your hard work, all the help, and for Aiden being so awesome, working hard, and spending his time for a bunch of ladies. Women. Yeah. <laughs> and we're probably not that interesting to him, so he's really sacrificing in there. Thank you, Aiden, and thanks everybody who joined us. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sitting at the table with us and uh, we'd like to hear from you. Email us, yeah. write a comment on Facebook or whatever, and we'll see you back here next week at eight o'clock.